one today. This is what we're playing with. So we've got a couple of lithium batteries, but we're going to be assembling this one. Now I've completely decapitated the King's battery box. As you can see, it's one of the King's battery boxes and basically pulled all the components out of the top because we don't need any of those components in there. Now, what I'm gonna do is fill that box full of this fire retardant Sikaflex. Now I know that's gonna be no match for a fire with lithium iron phosphate batteries. I know that, okay? But I may as well use it. And then I'm also going to be slotting some cardboard down the sides in between the cells, just to minimize as much play as I can in that box. So this box is basically still the, the swollen cells. This is where they're gonna live permanently now. And in that box right there, that toolbox is gonna to be mounted to the front of the trailer in out the front. And there's gonna be solar panels hooked up to that. And that will maintain all three of these batteries. Now, it's also important to note, I don't recommend doing this obviously with swollen cells. I'm just gonna keep testing them and punishing them. And on the next video, what I'll be doing is stress testing that King's inverter that I have as well. So this inverter is going to cop it, basically. What we're gonna do, it's, it's never ever gonna do what we're gonna do in the tests. It's never gonna need to run at full, you know, 2,800 watts power constantly. It's never gonna need to do that. But it's just gonna be a test to test out that King's inverter, basically. Because I did get it for 200 bucks. I, I cannot complain. I've, never ever got a pure sine wave inverter for 200 bucks. That's just completely mind boggling to me. So once we do the test on that as well, um, we're, we're gonna whack this whole box together. I've got all the parts now, got everything. This is the one part I was waiting on, 240 volt inlet. And that inlet is to hook up to the 40 amp charger. So 40 amp lithium charger. We've got a few Anderson sockets here. We've got the MPPT controller, Bluetooth as well. And also got a new crimper here today as well. Well, not today, recently. Got a few lights, might stick some lights in the box just to see what's going on in there if I need to. But yeah, um, and we've got vent fans. Thermo controlled vent fans, which will be really handy when that box gets hot sitting outside. Well, I'll start putting this together and show you what happens, eh? Alrighty, well there we have it. She is chockers to the brim of that stuff. I thought it was gonna be black, but it's actually gray. So I had to stick the bus bars on just to make sure that the cells were still in the right position, obviously being so swollen. Still wondering if I should mount the BMS to the side and just, if it's gonna catch fire, it's gonna stuff the BMS anyway, so I may as well just use, I'm almost just thinking I may as well use the BMS cables it comes with. But it would be nice for them to be a little bit longer. I'm just trying to figure out what orientation I wanna have them in so that uh, the cables don't look completely disgusting. It is nice that they come these Mueller Energy BMSs do come with its own wiring loom, but uh, trying to make them look neat is actually quite a task. Okay, after much huffing and puffing and carrying on, there's the final result. All the cables are reasonably neat and safe as possible. So we've got the balancer lead here, we've got the BMS lead here, they're probably going to get strapped to the side somehow. Now, I do suggest when you do get these all-in-one looms, don't make a massive mess of them like I did. And uh, yeah, <laughs> take your time reorganizing the cables and how they run because it takes ages if you do get them jumbled up. 
So when you do get a BMS like this Mueller Energy one, just make sure when you get that all in one loam that you sort it out before installing it to the battery. It makes your life a lot easier. <laughs> and what I've done also is just taped these crimps to the end because I don't know where I'm gonna be terminating the battery yet, or well, battery wires yet. So yeah, there we have it. Come up quite nice, to be honest. Well, for an ugly swollen battery, it's looking better than I was expecting. <laughs> All right, now because I've completely decapitated the lid, I have all this room in here that I'm thinking about using and actually reusing the cap that they have, covering it all up, covering everything up in here. So it's actually really handy that it fits. And then I can get this in here and probably screw that down as well. That actually should work out really well, to be honest. Quite stoked about that. Alrighty guys, there we have it. Sorry about the dryer again. So, I can put this sheath over the whole top and that will hold everything in and cover it up properly. And I've still got access to plug everything in. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with how that turned up. I've just got to run another wire in or out of here. Might even use that hole that's already there. And uh, yeah, I've put a few dabs of uh, Sikaflex on here as well as extra precaution to hold it down. As anyone knows, Sikaflex is like concrete, so really good stuff. Hopefully, shouldn't be too long and it'll be a functioning battery. So also at the moment, I've got to run this plug. I'm going to stick that in for the display. So I'm going to run the display remotely out of this battery. I'm not too sure what I'm going to run it in yet. Maybe a little power box from Bunnings. I'm not too sure yet. We'll soon see. I'm going to get this together for now. Well, there we have it, guys. Absolutely beautiful. Now I'm just going to stick it back down properly. Quite happy with how that turned out, to be honest. Alrighty guys, battery is assembled, the only bummer is the shunt has reset. So as you can see this is the switch wires that you can use to turn the discharge on and off. Really handy when connecting inverters basically. But there we have it, got the big positive one, big negative around the back so that I can wire the shunt up the top here and then have power coming out the front. So, very, very happy with how it's turned out. Let's have a look at these cells, hey? 3327, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, I'm going to hook up these two chargers, 20 amp charger there, 40 amp charger here, and we'll monitor what happens, hey? Let's have a look, see. Pushing in 60 amps. Hopefully this gets the battery display in the right position eventually because it does believe it's at 75% when it's not. The cells are nearly completely topped up, so we'll see. There we go. It's tapering off quite quickly. We've got 40 amps, down to 40 amps now. It's gonna drop off very quickly. Amps, nearly there. <laughs> Hurry up. Come on. Don't have all night. Finally there. 100%. So that's good to know that the BMS does reset itself eventually. But, yeah. 
So, in the next video, we're going to punish that king's inverter. See what we can get out of this thing, hey? Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. As you can see there, we're pulling 3,059 watts every now and again. It's bouncing around all over the place.